Okay, we're now recording. Okay, I have one major problem to do 65, get that done. And then I was gonna get started with some of 3.5 today. Okay, so that's a game plan for today. So right here, the very last question, problem 65, that involved a picture. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I can't show you both the book and my work at the same time. So you kind of have to follow along with how that works, sort of. Okay. Okay, concerning the problem we had yesterday, and I can't write it, unfortunately, but I'll just talk about it. Number eight that we did in class. Okay, so number eight. You have blah, blah, blah to the 99th, okay? So you put a 99 in front, one plus X plus X squared to the 98th power times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside is one plus two X. Okay, the derivative of one is zero, derivative of X is one, derivative of X squared is two X. Okay, so sorry, I can't write it. But again, for number eight, you go 99, one plus x plus x squared to the 98th, and then times one plus two x. One plus two x is the derivative of the inside stuff. Okay. All right, then the only other one that I wanted to show you was 65, and then I'll get started on the next section, which is something called implicit differentiation. Okay, and this is the section where we're actually going to be plugging in for x and y, perhaps, not just x. So far, it's only been x. Okay, 65, to give us this picture and definitions of u, v, and w. Okay, so u is f of g of x, v is g of f of x, and w is g of g of x. And they ask you to find each derivative if it exists and if it does not exist, explain why. Okay. So I'm gonna have to put the book down so it'll be a little bit out of focus and show you what's happening with my notes. Okay, so 3.465. Okay, so A, U of X is F of G of X. <clears throat> so all of these involve a derivative. <clears throat> so the way the chain rule works is if U is F of G of X, U prime of X by the chain rule is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And that's the way the chain rule works. Okay, this is a direct application of the chain rule way back over here on page 198. That one there, capital F prime of x is little f prime of g of x, g prime of x. All right, put that in your next formula sheet. Let me show you the picture here. Sorry, the picture is a little bit out of focus. If you have the book, of course, you can just refer to the book. <coughs> okay, so we have this. Now I just plug in one. Now, everywhere they're asking stuff about one. So plug in one. So u prime of one is f prime of g of one, g prime of one. Okay, so 3.465a. So first thing I do is g of one. g of one is three. So the blue graph, when x is one, y is one, two, three. So I now have f prime of three, g prime of one. The primes mean slope. Slope at three for the f graph, slope at one for the g graph. So f prime of three. So f prime of three, one, two, three, I want the slope right here, okay? The slope I got was negative one fourth because if you look right here, the best way to do this is to look at two nice points like here, right? So these two, one, two, three, four to the right and one down means a slope of negative one fourth. And then G prime of one, slope of the G graph at X equals one, okay? So the G graph is right here. That's going to be negative three. Again, looking at two nice points from here to here, over one, down three. So G prime of one is negative three. So F prime of three is negative one fourth. 
g prime of one is negative three. Multiply them together, you get positive three fourths. <laughs> Okay, part B asks for V prime of one. All right, so V of X is defined to be G of F of X. V of X is G of F of X. So again, by the chain root, V prime of X is G prime of F of X times F prime of X. Now I plug in one, V prime of one, G prime of F of one, F prime of one. So first I have to figure out F of one. Okay, F of one I have here is two. F of one, red graph, F of one is two. So I have G prime of two, F prime of one. Okay, and again, I want slopes, G prime of two, but G prime of two does not exist. What is the slope right here? Well, the function is not differentiable there, right? It's a corner point. Okay, you have two different slopes depending on whether I come from the left or from the right. Okay, so if I come from the left, the slope looks like negative whatever. And if I look at the slope coming from the right, it looks like positive whatever. Anyway, it's two different values. It's a corner point. So it doesn't matter whether this exists or not. Um, the answer is the derivative does not exist for B. Okay, and then finally C, W prime of one. W is G of g of x. So that means for, to completely forget the f, ignore the red, pretend there's no red. I don't know if you can blot this out of your mind that there's no red graph for part c. We're only looking at the blue graph, right? So it's g of g of x. So w is g of g of x. So w prime is g prime of g of x times g prime of x. And again, they want one, so I plug in one everywhere. W prime of one is G prime of G of one, G prime of one. So first I need G of one. G of one is three. So X is one, blue graph. There is no red graph for now. One, two, three. <coughs> okay, so I want G prime of three, G prime of one. These are both slopes for the G graph. Slope at three, slope at one. Slope at three, I got two thirds. Okay, at three, one, two, three, we're right over here, right? So this section and the easiest two points to pick, I think are these two, right? So that's over one, two, three, up two, which is a slope of two thirds. And then G prime of one, I got negative three. Well, we already got that earlier, but let's look at that again. Slope at one, for the G graph is negative three. So at X equals one, what's the slope? So again, a nice convenient points are these, that's over one and down three. So negative three, and then two thirds times negative three is negative two. So that's my answer. So the answer is negative two. All right, so that's 65. That's as much as I was gonna show you from 3.4. And now I'm gonna introduce 3.5 to you. Okay, so I'm gonna mark this off, start 3.5, which is in something called implicit differentiation. Okay, so a little bit of theory first, and what's going on. Implicit differentiation, page 208. <laughs> All right, so for now, we've had y as a function of x. We say that explicitly. Okay, the opposite of implicit is explicit. Explicit, y is a function of x. Y is a function of x. We can isolate the y. <laughs> However, I could write x squared plus y squared equals 25. That's a circle. It's not even a function. Here's something much more complicated. x cubed plus y cubed equals 6xy. Okay, that turns out not to be a function either. Okay, if you wanna know what that looks like, it's this thing. They call it the folium of Descartes. You don't have to know that. That's on page 209. It's not even a function. Nevertheless, just because a graph isn't a function, doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to talk about a tangent line, right? If you have a circle, it's not a function, but you can talk about a tangent line there or there, right? 
and likewise for this folium of Descartes, whatever, we can talk about a slope of a tangent there and there and there and there and so on. <coughs> okay, one way around it is that you could split up the graph into functions. For instance, for a circle, you know, we can split it into an upper half and lower half, and then you can write it as a function. That might be possible, it might not be possible. This one is pretty much hopeless to try to solve that for y very easily. Okay. You can see we could break it up partially into functions, right? You could split this up into that. Okay, it passes the vertical line test. And then a piece like that and a piece like that, right? So you could break it up into functions implicitly so-called. It may not be easy to do. In fact, it may even be impossible to do, okay? But it can be done. You can see once I make the graph look something like this, right? So I break this up into three pieces, piece one, piece two, piece three. Now they're functions, okay? You may not be able to solve for them very easily, but we don't have to worry about it in general, okay? So how do I find a derivative in such circumstances? Okay, so I'll show you as an introduction for implicit differentiation. We basically piggyback off of the last section, the chain rule. Suppose I want the derivative of f of x cubed with respect to x. Okay, then you know how it works. Inside function is f of x, we go three f of x squared times the derivative of the inside, which is f prime of x. Okay, or assume that y is a function f x, maybe we can't write it explicitly. We don't have to worry about it. Let's just think about it implicitly. Okay, suppose I change f of x to y. Okay, so make that a y, the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. Okay, just replacing that with a y and that with a y. So the derivative of y cubed with respect to x is three y squared times the derivative of the inside, which is y prime, or we can write dy dx. Okay, let's look at overall big picture of what happened. So y, remember y is a function of x implied, it's not just a single letter, there's some function. Say, so what is the function? Can I write it as x sine x or three x squared minus five x minus sine x? No, maybe you weren't able to, but we don't care. Whatever it is, it looks like by the chain rule, I can just go three y squared times dy dx. Okay, essentially what that means is this. <clears throat> In these homework problems, you're gonna get x's and y's all mixed together. Okay, you're asked to find dy dx derivative. Okay. See how like five through 19, right? It doesn't just say y equals f of x equals blah, blah, blah. There's x's and y's all mixed up. Okay, so what do I do here? Here's the key. So you wanna maybe put this down as a simple example. Okay, if y is involved, okay, see how we go three y squared dy dx? Okay, you have to multiply it by an extra dy dx whenever y is involved. Now, if you see an x involved, just take the derivative as normal. If there's a y, you have to multiply by dy dx. It's part of the chain rule on a deeper level. Okay, but whether you understand that or not, just think as an algorithm, say, what do I do to get through the homework and the quiz and tests and so on, All right? For these problems, if you have a y involved, you have to tack on an extra dy dx. Now, technically you could also put y prime, but I want you to write dy dx, the Leibniz notation. It'll set you up for a future section where we're gonna do exclusively Leibniz notation. Okay, so technically you could write y prime. I want you to write dy dx. Okay, now let me show you this example in the text. Example one, x squared plus y squared equals 25, find dy dx. This is on page 209. So this circle, which is not a function, but it'd be a shame to say, okay, so what? It's a function, it's not a function. I still wanna talk about tangent, 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 right? You're on this um, Ferris wheel, right? 
You ever ride a Ferris wheel? It goes up and down. What's the slope here? What's the slope here? What's the slope here? And so on, right? <laughs> so please look at this algorithm. Okay. It's not y as a function of x. So it's not explicit differentiation. But look at the language for b. Find the equation of the tangent to the circle at the point 3, 4. Okay. So somewhere on the circle, there's a point 3, 4. Looks like the slope would be negative. Find that slope. So look at this algorithm. X squared plus Y squared equals 25. You differentiate both sides with respect to X is the language we say. So you have X squared plus Y squared equals 25. Take the derivative of the left side and the right side. Derivative of X squared plus Y squared equals the derivative of 25 with respect to X. We're adding to our bag of tricks essentially. <clears throat> so back in algebra one, when you have a left side and a right side, Algebra one, okay, add the same thing to both sides, subtract the same thing to both sides, multiply the same thing on both sides, divide the same thing on both sides, right? Then later you got more fancy, you square both sides, take the square root of both sides, and then later uh, take the log of both sides, exponentiate both sides, okay? Well, now in calculus, we can take the derivative of both sides, right? If two things are equal, their derivatives are equal. So we would differentiate the left side and the right side. Okay, let's get the right side out of the way. What's the derivative of 25? Zero. Okay, now look very carefully at how they do this. This is a perfect example of how uh, implicit differentiation works. In fact, it's a good example to put on your cheat sheet if you wish. Okay, how do I take the derivative of x squared plus y squared with respect to x as we say? Okay, the derivative of x squared is two x is normal. Well, they broke this up even more. The derivative of sum is the sum of the derivatives, but anyway, what's the derivative of x squared? Two x. The derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx, okay? So when there's a y involved, because y is a function of x implicitly, we have to tack on an extra dy dx. The logic is exactly the same as what I showed you back here, okay? If you pretend that's a y and pretend that's dy dx, when there's a y involved, it's not just gonna be the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared. It's 3y squared times either y prime or dy dx. I want you to write dy dx though. Okay, so again, from back here, take the derivative of the left side, it's 2x plus 2y dy dx. So every y gets an extra dy dx by the chain rule, equals the derivative of the right-hand side, which is zero. Okay, then algebraically, solve for dy dx. I can do that by subtracting 2x on both sides and then dividing by 2y. Show that to you quickly on the next page. So a little bit of algebra, dy dx is negative x over y. Okay, show that to you quickly again, in case that algebra is not that hard. Solve for dy dx, subtract 2x, be negative 2x, divided by 2y, negative 2x divided by 2y, twos cancel out, negative x over y. Okay, so here's an expression for our derivative. And this is the first time the derivative will have x and y. So now if they tell you what's the derivative at three, four, just plug in three and four, negative three fourths. And of course you can play the same game of, you know, y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. So at the point three comma four, the slope is negative three fourths. And just eyeballing it, we thought that the derivative should be negative, right? And it is negative. Okay, so upshot again, when you have a y involved for these problems, you have to multiply by an extra dy dx for implicit differentiation. Okay, and I'll start showing you how some of these work today. Okay. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, this assignment, one to 33. I'm not sure if that's completely accurate. Yeah, one to 33, 49 to 52, all 54, 56, 57. Okay. All right, so find the derivatives by implicit differentiation. So you should notice right away the difference between these kind of problems and the ones we did before. Instead of y is a function of x, right? 
y equals, and then the right-hand side only had x. Right? It can be real complicated, e to the x, square root of x, uh, inverse tangent divided by ln x. It was still just y on the left side, uh, or f of x on the left side, and the right side only had x. Now look at, you got x's and y's all mixed together. So when you have x's and y's mixed together, you do the implicit differentiation, right? Okay, and we have to go up to 57. So again, let me show it to you for those of you who don't have the book. Uh, up to 11, that's up to 21-ish, 23, 28, okay. And some more. Okay, what do we have to go up to? 57. So, not sure we have to do all these, but. No. Well, when it says CAS, CAS stands for Computer Algebra System. It's almost a certainty that I didn't ask you to do those problems. I don't think I have to do any of these, but you definitely have to do these derivatives to inverse trig functions, which I haven't talked about yet, but we'll get to eventually. And I think we have to go up to 57, so I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And to give you names of some of these, well, you should be familiar with hyperbola and ellipse there, 27, 28. You have all these fancy names. Don't memorize any of these. 29, cardioid. You can probably guess cardioid. Cardio sounds like heart. So 29 is heart shape. 30 is an asteroid, not an asteroid like a heavenly body asteroid. This is asteroid, that funny shape there. And then 31 is called a lemniscape, a devil's curve. So don't memorize any of these. Okay, look at 33, campile of eudoxus. Okay, certainly don't memorize that. I haven't memorized what is a campile of eudoxus. So what's a campile of eudoxus? Well, you got a graph to see what it looks like. And I don't really know what it looks like, so don't worry about it. But nevertheless, whatever it looks like, you can still find the equation of the tangent line to the curve. Okay. All right, so let me get started with showing you how to take a derivative dy dx for stuff like this, okay? Okay, number one, 9x squared minus y squared equals one. <laughs> so the first thing you do is differentiate both sides with respect to x, okay? If two things are equal, the derivatives are equal. Okay, key thing. <clears throat> When there's an x, take the derivative as normal. When there's a y, you have to multiply by an extra dy dx. Okay, that's the algorithm. How come? It's part of the chain root. Okay, but whether you understand it or not, at least get the algorithm down. So differentiate both sides. What's the derivative of nine x squared? Eighteen x. What's the derivative of negative y squared? Since there's a y involved, you got to go negative two y times dy dx, okay? Technically, you could put y prime. I want you to write dy dx. It's to set you up for later where you have to write the d notation. Equals the derivative of one is zero. Okay. Now, algebraically solve for dy dx, that's all. So I move this one over. So I get 18x equals two y dy dx. Divide both sides by 2y, and there we go. So dy dx is 9x over y. Okay, and keep in mind dy dx is one symbol. It looks like a fraction, but we're not using it as a fraction. It's just an, it's another letter of the alphabet, so to speak. Or pretend it's just like m, slope. After all, dy dx is a slope, slope of the tangent line. Okay, but don't like cancel out the d's or try to substitute in. This is all one symbol. So 9x over y. So now if they ask for the derivative at a particular point, right? So if they say x is blah, 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 y is blah, 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 then you plug in x and y. All the derivatives before, right? We were just plugging in for x. So what about for y? Y was never there. And then I mentioned, well, later on, you're going to get x and y. This is the later on. So now you might have to plug in x and y. Okay. All right, five. x squared minus 4xy plus y squared equals Four, okay. <clears throat> so x squared isn't that bad. Y squared isn't that bad now that we know. Negative four xy, we still have to use the product rule. So that's a little bit tricky. <clears throat> 
Okay, take the derivative of both sides. Let me do the easy ones first. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. What's the derivative of y squared? 2y dy dx, right? So again, the rule is if there's a y involved, you have to tack on an extra dy dx. The logic is just like over here. It's part of the chain rule. And the derivative of four is zero, okay? So the harder part is this middle one. What's the derivative of negative four x y? It's a product. So I have to use the product rule. Okay, the underlines mean the first function is negative four x, the second function is y. All right, first function, second function. All right, so here we go. First, negative four x times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of y is one times dy dx because there's a y involved. Plus second function, which is y times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of negative four x is negative four. And since I was differentiating with respect to x, I don't need to put in any extra stuff after that. Okay, so this is what I have. Okay, so let me go through that again one more time. Okay, take the derivative of both sides of the equal sign, derivative of x squared, two x. Derivative of y squared plus two y dy dx, because there's a y involved equals, this is easy, derivative of four is zero, okay? And then this one's the product root, negative four X times Y. So product root first function, second function. So copy the first negative four X times the derivative of the second, derivative of Y is one <coughs> times DY DX because there's a Y there. Plus the second function Y times the derivative of the first, the derivative of negative four X is negative four. Okay, now algebraically solve for dy dx, okay? which means everything with a dy dx stays on one side, everything else goes on the other side. Okay, so this one, the one I have circled, they do not have a dy dx, so they go over to the other side. So that's what I mean by that red arrow there. Okay, that has a dy dx that stays on the left side. That has a dy dx that stays. These two do not have dy dx, they move to the other side and change sign. That means that's gonna become a negative two X. That was a negative four Y, it's a positive four Y, right? Okay, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to solve for dy dx. So I want all the dy dx's on one side, in this case, the left side, and everything that does not have a dy dx moves over to the other side. So it becomes a negative two X and a positive four Y. Okay, so these two expressions each have a dy dx, right? So factor out that dy dx, and what do I have left? A negative four y, oops, sorry, uh, where am I? Negative four x, sorry, negative four x plus two y, right. And now just divide both sides by negative four x plus two y, and I rewrite it. It's a little bit easier to write the positive and then the negative is one less symbol. Okay, so I write that as four y minus two x divided by two y, minus four X, okay? I'll let you stop there, although technically you could factor out a two, right? And simplify further, but again, it's one of those where it's probably not worth it. If I were your algebra one teacher, I'd make you factor out the two, but we're so focused on the calculus, we're getting to the point, okay, we know we can do that pretty easy algebra, but let's just stop right there. Now, if this were very big, like 4,000 minus 2,000 next, and these are almost divisible by a thousand, I'd take out the thousand, I suppose, but in this case, taking out a two, don't worry too much about it. Okay, so that's the idea. All right, so again, notice all these problems, say, how do I know when I'm supposed to do implicit differentiation if they don't tell me? Okay, you see all these problems, yeah, the directions say, find dy dx by implicit differentiation. But later on, right, you're gonna have so many other kinds of problems, okay, and I just say, find a derivative. Okay, after all, we have what, 11 sections, it's our biggest chapter. Say, so how do I know when I got to do this implicit differentiation stuff? Okay, so you know when X's and Y's are all mixed up. Okay, all the derivatives we had so far were explicit derivatives, right? Doesn't matter if it's product or quotient or trig or whatever, right? Like all of these, it was Y on the left-hand side only or F of X 
only, the right hand side only had a single letter, right? It was just X or theta or T or whatever. It was never two letters. Okay, now we have a mixture of X and Y. By the way, in case you're wondering, one option is to solve for Y, but that may not be easy or may even be impossible for some of these, right? In fact, that was part of the idea behind these, but say, can you solve for Y and then solve for the derivative explicitly? In other words, make it look like Y equals blah, blah, blah. Then it's just like all the other problems, okay? But for some of these, it's either too difficult or practically impossible. So you just have to take it as is, okay? All right, let me show you. I think 11 was the next one I was gonna show you. Um, yeah, 11. Y cosine X equals X squared plus Y squared. Not very fun to try to solve for Y, so we're not gonna bother. And you say, what does it look like? I don't know, I have no idea what it looks like. We don't care, okay? And what's interesting is that sometimes you're gonna get a better hold of the derivative than the actual graph itself, right? I don't know what this thing looks like, but nevertheless, whatever it looks like, it may not even be a function, squiggles all over the place. I can find the tangent line at any point of the graph. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the derivative of the left side is a derivative of the right side. Let me do the right side first because we've already seen that before. So on the right-hand side of the equal sign, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x plus, now we know the way this game works. The derivative of y squared is not just 2y. It's 2y dy dx, same game as over here. It's part of the chain rule. Okay, now what's the derivative of the left side? It's a product, right? Y cosine X, first function, second function. So first function times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of cosine X? <coughs> Negative sine X. Okay, again, you can put all the trig derivatives on your cheat sheet. And do I need to write anything after that? No, because it was differentiation with respect to X. But the second part of it, second function times the derivative of the first. So cosine X times the derivative of the first function, the derivative of Y is one, but since Y was involved, I have to put an extra dy dx, right? It's times one. But if it's times one, you don't have to write it. Okay. And now once again, algebraically solve for dy dx. So get all the dy dx on the same side, everything that does not have a dy dx on the other side. Okay, so this is a dy dx. I'm gonna bring this one over to the left side. So the dy dx's are both on the left side. This does not have a dy dx. I'm gonna have it join this other expression that doesn't have a dy dx on the right-hand side also. So that'll be positive. This one's gonna become positive, right? So that's the reason why I did it this way. <laughs> okay, so I subtract this one over. All the dy dx's on the left side, all the non dy dx's on the right side. So the right side's gonna be two x plus y sine x, right? If I move that over, it's positive. And now both of these have a dy dx, factor out that dy dx. So they become dy dx parentheses cosine x minus 2y. If I bring this over, it becomes a minus, right? All right, then I divide both sides by cosine x minus 2y, and there's my answer. So my derivative expression dy dx is 2x plus y sine x divided by cosine x minus 2y. Okay, and that's the derivative. <clears throat> so that's my answer. Okay, again, a nice thing is, say, so what does this look like? I don't know. It may not even be a function. It could squiggle all over. Nevertheless, you give me any point on the graph, you know, I can plug in and that'll be the derivative. And I can find the slope of the tangent line. I can write the equation of the tangent line and so on, okay? So strangely enough, I can get a handle on the derivative better than the graph itself. And I was about to say function, but I don't even know this is a function. It doesn't matter whether it's a function or not. Okay, all right, so that's how this weird implicit differentiation goes and I'll show you more. Okay. A little bit tougher is 19 because you have sine of x, y, there's a product root and there's also a chain root and cosine 
x plus y. That's also a little bit messy. And there's a chain rule there too. Okay, so let's see what's happening. Okay, sine of xy equals cosine of x plus y. Okay, so again, you say, how do you know to do the implicit differentiation? You have x and y's mixed together. It's not y equals and then a function of x or f of x equals a function of x. All the ones we did before, they were complicated, some of them, right? You got trigs and square roots and products and quotients and whatever, but it was always y equals a function of x, okay? Now x's and y's are mixed up. So the derivative of the left side equals the derivative of the right side. Okay, so derivative of sine xy, there's a chain rule. Outside function is sine. So derivative of sine, cosine. So cosine xy, I'm done with that. And then by the chain rule, it's times the derivative of the inside. So now I have to differentiate x, y. That's a product. So here we go. X is the first function, y is the second function. <clears throat> so first, x times the derivative of the second. So what's the derivative of y? One times dy dx, because there's a y involved. Plus second function, y, times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of x? One. And since there's a multiplication by one, you don't have to write it. And I don't have to put any d stuff because I was taking the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so it's only the y's that need a dy dx. If there's an x, you don't need it. Okay, because if you want to get real, real technical, you could say I'm supposed to put dx dx, but dx dx is one. Rate of change of x with respect to x is one. All right, so equals the derivative of the right-hand side. So again, what's the derivative of cosine of blah, blah, blah? Negative sine of blah, blah, blah. Okay. <clears throat> and now by the chain root, it's times the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of x? One, period, that's it. Plus, but the derivative of y is one times dy dx. So you can see it's quite messy. Okay. Now I, I just, quote unquote, have to isolate dy dx, but that's a task in itself. Okay, so how do I get dy dx by itself? So the first thing I'm gonna do is distribute. So distribute cosine xy here and here and negative sine x plus y here and here. It's gonna be a mess. Okay, so let's see, cosine xy times x dy dx becomes x cosine xy dy dx plus distribute y, y cosine xy. Okay, so one more time, this times that, there's an x cosine xy dy dx plus y cosine xy. Okay, this side, negative sine blah, 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 times one. If it's times one, you just leave it alone, right? Then how about times dy dx? Well, it's minus sine x plus y dy dx. Okay. And now in red, everything that moves, all the dy dx is on one side, all the non dy dx is on the other side. Okay, so I notice this has a dy dx, this has a dy dx, so they gotta be on the same side. So I move this one over. By the way, you might say, can I move this one over? Yes, but I notice if I move this one over, that will become a negative, and this is already a negative, so I'm gonna have two negatives. But if I move this one over here, that will be positive, that will also be positive. I'm always in favor of having as many positives as possible, right? Okay, but um, leave that as it may. So that comes over. That does not have a dy dx, so that stays. This one's gonna move over. It becomes a negative. So unfortunately, on the right-hand side, I have two things that are negative. Can't do anything about it. All right, so this one and this one have dy dx, right? When I move it over, it'll become a plus. 
I'll factor out that dy dx. So here we go, x cosine xy plus sine of x plus y equals, okay, that one stays negative sine x plus y. That one moves over and becomes a negative y cosine of xy. It's a big mess. Finally, to isolate dy dx, I divide both sides by this mess. Okay, so there we are. Not very nice. Negative sine x plus y minus y cosine xy all over x cosine xy plus sine x plus y. So we're really getting our money's worth for this particular problem, right? There's a lot involved. Okay, and again, if you were to ask me right now, you know, what does this look like? I have no idea. I don't know what it looks like. Since it says sine and cosine, I'm guessing there's some, you know, squiggling up and down, but I don't really know. That's most likely what's going to happen. Okay. Nevertheless, even though I don't know what it looks like, I can tell you the derivative anywhere. Here it is. Okay. Now, if you want the derivative at one particular point, then you just plug in, just like before. So let me show you the language again. So 27, <clears throat> look above problem 25. Use implicit differentiation to find the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. Okay, I was going to do 27. So the difference this time is they give you a point. So x squared minus xy minus y squared equals one. We can find dy dx just like all the other ones. Now we're going to plug in whatever two, one. Okay, the graph is a hyperbola, whatever. Okay, I can find the equation of the tangent of the line, even though I don't know what this thing looks like. Okay. And what time is it? We don't have that much time left, so we shall see. <clears throat> okay, x squared plus xy minus y squared equals one. Okay, the way I'm going to treat this one, the negative xy, think of it as plus negative xy. I think it's easier and less confusing, okay, to make this a plus negative xy, okay? So the first function is negative x. The second function is y, okay? <clears throat> All right, here we go. Derivative of the left side, derivative of x squared, 2x. Do I put anything extra? No, because I'm differentiating with respect to x. And let's get this out of the way. The derivative of negative y squared, negative 2y times dy dx, because there's a y involved. By the chain root, it needs a dy dx. And let's get this out of the way. Equals the derivative of one is zero, so that's easy. Okay, so let's do the harder one. The middle product root, okay? I change it to plus negative xy. <clears throat> so it's a product root. The first function is negative x. The second function is y. So plus first function negative x times the derivative of the second. So what's the derivative of y? One, which I'm not writing, times one means don't put it, times dy dx. Plus second function y times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of negative x? Negative one. So there we go. Okay, now I could algebraically solve for dy dx, but there's something better. Since they already tell me the point is two, one, I might as well just start plugging in now and then the algebra becomes much easier. Okay, so put a two for every occurrence of x. Two goes there and there. And every time I see y, I put in one. So one goes there, one goes there. Okay, yes, you could solve for dy dx right away, I think right now it's easier to plug in. So two times two is four plus negative two dy dx plus negative one minus two dy dx equals zero. Okay, that's a little bit easier. So four minus one is three, negative two dy dx and another negative two dy dx is negative four dy dx. Okay, a little bit of algebra. dy dx is three fourths, that's a three there three over four. Okay, I add that, divide by four. So the slope dy dx is three fourths. 
and there we go. So y minus y1, y minus 1 equals m 3 fourths times x minus x1, x minus 2. There's the equation of the tangent line, and you can stop right there, as I mentioned before. All right. Uh, what time is it? I, have, I think I have time just for one more, and then I'm done. No in-class assignment today. Okay, 33. The campire of Eudoxus. Okay, y squared equals 5x to the fourth minus x squared. Find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point 1, 2. And you already know, skip any graphing calculator icon, so don't worry about that. <laughs> Okay, this one, this one's actually much easier since X's and Y's aren't really mixed together. Y squared equals five X to the fourth minus X squared. All right, so the derivative of this side equals the derivative of this side. So derivative Y squared, two Y dy dx. The derivative of this side, well, that's easy. There's only Y's, uh, sorry, there's no Y's, there's only X's. So it's the normal derivative. 20x cubed minus 2x. Then to solve for dy dx, just divide both sides by 2y. So 20x cubed minus 2x divided by 2y, plug in 1, 2. <clears throat> so 1 goes here, 1 goes here, 2 goes here. So 20 minus 2 divided by 2 times 2, 18 over 4, or 9 over 2. So that's my slope. That's my point. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, done. That's the equation of the tangent line. I don't even know what it looks like. I could find it on a graphing calculator, I suppose. Okay, But I know the equation of the tangent line at 1, 2. There it is. Okay. All right, folks, looks like we're out of time. Okay, so next time, we will actually learn the inverse trig derivatives. Okay, we're only going to focus on inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. The others, they do exist, but we don't use them that much. So I'm not even going to introduce those to you. Okay. All right. So we're out of time. That'll do it for today, folks. So everybody have a good day and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Excuse me, Professor. Yes, my. Um, I'm sorry. You missed me on the attendance today. Uh, I called you at first. You must have come a little late. So I was I was two minutes late to class. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. I'll get you, Miles. All right. I thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Right All right. Bye.